Today we're gonna to be meal prepping. In fact, we're gonna make all of our meals in one day so that we can have them throughout the week. They're all gonna be prepped up and ready to go. I have five recipes for you guys that are pretty easy. And like I said, we're just gonna do it in one day so we have enough to eat throughout the week. And the cool thing about this particular meal prep is that we're really only gonna be focusing on two proteins. So I'm gonna be using chicken thighs and steak and then two main vegetables, which is gonna be cauliflower rice and spinach. So you can purchase these up in bulk and not have to worry about going to the store to buy a bunch of different ingredients that you will have leftovers and not use and they'll just rot in your refrigerator. So that's why I like doing this where we only use like maybe a couple of proteins or a couple of vegetables and combine those in all of our recipes for the week. Now, some of these meals are freezer friendly too. So if we're gonna be eating something that we're gonna have maybe like five or six days down the road, you're definitely gonna wanna freeze it. And I have slow cooker and instant pot options for you, as well as something that we're gonna cook on the grill. I hope that this has you guys excited, so let's get cooking. The first thing I'm gonna do is cook up some chicken. So I've purchased around six pounds of chicken and I'm not gonna cook it up all because I actually wanna keep some of it raw because we're gonna be using those in some freezer meals so I don't really wanna cook up everything. So I'm only gonna cook up around a pound, a pound and a half of the chicken and I'm gonna cook it up in my Instant Pot. Now this chicken I have is actually frozen and I'm gonna be cooking it from frozen in my Instant Pot. To cook chicken in the Instant Pot, I do have a recipe on my website that I'm gonna have linked down below for you guys, and I have instructions on how to cook it from either thawed chicken or frozen chicken. Now, today, you probably don't really wanna follow what I'm doing because I actually do recommend that you don't just throw like a solid block of chicken thighs in your Instant Pot like I did, and I know better, but I still did it anyway because I didn't really wanna waste time and I just wanted to get started. So you can still do it, it still works, but you kind of have to run your pressure cooker twice, as you're gonna see. So you don't really wanna throw a giant block of chicken thighs into your Instant Pot. You actually kinda wanna run it under some warm water and separate out those, those thighs or if you're using breasts, separate out the breasts individually. It's just so it can cook evenly. If you throw a solid mass in there, it doesn't really cook all the way through. And so after you run a pressure cycle one time, you'll see after you break it apart, there's still some pieces that were not finished cooking. It's totally okay. You just lock the lid again and cook it for another five minutes and then it works out. It's perfect after that. I like to add some chicken broth to my Instant Pot. You do need to add some sort of liquid, whether that's water or chicken broth. I like to use chicken broth just because I think it adds a little bit more flavor to the chicken. And then we're gonna be adding a teaspoon of salt. You wanna put your lid on and make sure your vent is turned to ceiling instead of vent, or else it's not gonna to come to pressure. And you wanna cook it at high pressure. If you're using a thawed chicken thighs or breast, you're gonna cook it for 10 minutes. If you have frozen ones, you wanna cook it for 15 minutes. Now, while we're letting our chicken cook in the Instant Pot, let's move on to a couple of different freezer recipes. The first one I'm gonna show you how to make is a keto sesame chicken. Now, the cool thing about this is we're gonna all put it into one Ziploc bag, and I have these nifty little freezer bag holders that I purchased from Amazon. I'll have them linked down below for you guys if you're interested in purchasing them as well. They're kinda cool just because it helps hold up the bag so nothing's spilling over. If you don't wanna use plastic bags, go ahead and use like a, a mixing bowl that you can freeze or a casserole dish that you could freeze if you wanna use like a glass, more um, eco-friendly route. I'm gonna put around six chicken thighs into my Ziploc bag. Now, I should have told you guys, these are skinless, boneless chicken thighs that I'm using just because I don't have to worry about picking out bones. And then we're gonna add around a half a cup of sugar-free maple syrup. Now, the brand that I like to use is by Chalk Zero. I'll have it linked down below for you guys. You can save 10% off your order if you use my code KETOFOCUS at checkout. You'll also need five tablespoons of liquid aminos, or you can use soy sauce if you don't wanna use the liquid aminos, but just remember, soy sauce has carbs. One half teaspoon of onion powder, a quarter cup of sugar-free ketchup, two tablespoons of sesame seed oil, two cloves of garlic that are minced, or I like to use my shortcut, which is using garlic paste, so it's around two teaspoons of garlic paste, and a quarter teaspoon of red pepper flakes. You wanna seal this up and give it a good mix, and you can freeze this for later on in the week. 
You'll have a couple of different options for cooking this. My recipe on my website says to cook it in the Instant Pot. I have the full instructions listed there, so I'll have a link down below for you to go to. I also add in some arrowroot powder just to help thicken up the sauce. Another option is to put it in the slow cooker. You'll just put it on low and cook it for around six to eight hours. I like to serve this over cauliflower rice. It's delicious that way, and it just happens to be one of those vegetables that we picked up in bulk for the week. Our next freezer recipe is a white chicken chili. So in another Ziploc bag, I'm gonna add in the rest of our chicken. You'll also need one and a half cups of chicken broth. Now, if you guys have any leftover chicken broth from making up that Instant Pot chicken, then you could use that here instead. One can of diced tomatoes, one can of green diced chilies, two tablespoons of heavy cream, one and a half teaspoons of chili powder, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of cumin, half a teaspoon of dried oregano, and half a teaspoon of pepper. I'm also gonna add around a cup and a half of cauliflower rice. My recipe also calls for a brick of cream cheese, so eight ounces of cream cheese, but you don't wanna add this yet if we're gonna be freezing it just because it makes it all weird looking. So save that until right before you finish cooking it. This recipe can also be made in either the Instant Pot or the slow cooker, and I have both instructions listed on my website. I wanted to pause the video just to take time to thank my sponsor for this video today. Today's video is sponsored by Built Bar. If you guys haven't tried them before, well, they are a keto approved protein bar that's delicious. I love them because they're packed with protein, plus they're low in carb. They're sweetened with erythritol. They make a perfect midday snack or breakfast, or I like to use them post-workout just to give myself a little bit more energy and plus that protein to help me recover. Built Bar has a wide range of flavors from coconut to salted caramel to raspberry and orange. There really is a flavor for everybody. They have a wide range of other products too on their website, builtbar.com, so make sure you check them out, like this Energy Plus Protein. This is a supplement that you can use if you don't wanna have coffee in the morning or you're on the go, or maybe you're hiking and you need an extra boost of protein plus energy. This is a good go-to. If you guys wanna try Built Bar, and I highly suggest you do, I'm gonna have a link down below in the description box, plus a discount code that you guys can use to save 20% off your order. All right, now back to our chicken that's cooking in the Instant Pot. After it's done pressure cooking, you're just gonna let the pressure release naturally for around 10 minutes before releasing the valve and taking out your chicken. So as you can see, my chicken was still not cooked all the way. Totally fine though. I just put the lid back on, pressure cooked it for another five minutes, and then it turned out perfectly. Now my easy tip for shredding chicken is just to take your electric mixer and then just give it a good whirl right there in the Instant Pot. It's gonna help break up all your chicken and it's an easy way to make it shredded. Now I have all this beautiful leftover chicken broth that we're actually gonna save. So I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna strain it and we're gonna use that later on in another recipe. Now the reason why I've cooked up this chicken in the Instant Pot is that we're gonna be using it to make my keto chicken taquitos. I'm gonna show you how to make the filling now. In a small bowl, we're gonna be adding our cooked chicken along with eight ounces of softened cream cheese, two cups of chopped up spinach, now I purchased a fresh spinach that I've just kind of chopped up just a little bit. You could use frozen too, just make sure you drain it completely or else it's gonna be kind of soggy. Two cups of shredded Mexican blend cheese, a third cup of sour cream, and a quarter cup of salsa. We're gonna mix this together until it's combined. And now our stuffing is done and it's ready just to set aside and store until we go to cook these. Thank you. 
So when you do go to cook your chicken taquitos, what you would do is just lay down a low carb tortilla, whatever brand you wanna use, and then add a little bit of our chicken mixture to it. Roll it up and then fry it in some avocado oil. And I'll have this full instructions listed down below in the description box. All right, let's recap right now. So, so far we've prepped up three recipes. We've done our keto sesame chicken, our keto white chicken chili, and now our keto taquitos. So now let's finish up with our other two recipes that involve using steak. Now the dinner that I'm gonna make up tonight for us to eat is just some grilled steak along with some cream spinach. So we're gonna be using that spinach that I picked up to make and it's really, really simple recipe. We're gonna cook those steaks on the grill and while that's cooking, we're gonna make up our cream spinach. In a skillet, I'm gonna add four tablespoons of butter. And then one small diced up onion. I'm just using a bunch of onions that I picked up from the store that were already pre-sliced. You'll also need one teaspoon of dried sage and around four teaspoons of garlic paste, or you can use four cloves of garlic that are minced up. And then I like to add a pinch of nutmeg just because I think it helps bring out some of the flavor and it just pairs really well. It reminds me of Thanksgiving. Once your onions are softened, now it's time to make up our sauce. So I'm gonna add around a couple teaspoons of arrowroot powder. Arrowroot powder is what I like to use as a thickener when I'm cooking keto recipes. You could use whatever you want though. If you wanna use xanthan gum or gelatin or just heavy cream, you could do that too. So after I add in my arrowroot powder, I'm gonna give it a good stir and then I'm gonna slowly pour in around a half of a cup of heavy whipping cream and another half a cup to one cup of chicken broth. So that leftover chicken broth that we had from our chicken cooking in the Instant Pot, you can pour it in here. Cook it up until your sauce starts to thicken and then we're gonna add in our spinach. I'm gonna be adding in a lot of spinach here. So you can add in the rest of your spinach if you want, or you could save some if you wanna make a salad later on. But remember, this does cook down into hardly anything. So I recommend adding as much spinach as you have. So at least like 10 ounces, if not more. Let it cook, or you can cover it too to help the spinach wilt. And once it does, and it's everything is wilty and looks beautiful, now we're gonna add in some Parmesan cheese. So you wanna add in around a half a cup of Parmesan cheese. And now our cream spinach is done and those steaks are about ready, so let's have some dinner. Now you're probably wondering, well, where's the other recipe? Why are you eating dinner now? Isn't there still one more recipe? Well, there is, but I can't make it until after we're done eating this dinner because I'm gonna use our leftover steak to make our last recipe. So our last recipe is gonna be a steak marinara sauce that we can pour over cauliflower rice or if you did have any leftover spinach. So this is also a freezer meal, but you could just keep it in the refrigerator if you wanna have it the next day. Ziploc bag, we're gonna add whatever leftover steak you have. And if you have some onion, it's a great idea to throw this in here. I accidentally used up all my onion when I was making the cream spinach and wasn't thinking that I'd need it for this recipe, but that's just how it goes for me when I cook sometimes. And I actually hope that you saved some spinach because you're gonna need to add two cups of your fresh spinach in here as well. Two teaspoons of Italian seasoning, one teaspoon of salt, and half a teaspoon of pepper. And then I'm gonna add two teaspoons of garlic paste. You can add two cloves of minced garlic if you want to, if you don't have the garlic paste. And then one cup of a low carb marinara sauce. I like to use the Rayo's brand, but whatever brand that you have that's low carb you could use, or you could just use tomato sauce. And then you'll need one cup of diced tomatoes. Seal it up and mix it together. And then you, like I said, you could freeze it or store it in your refrigerator to have the next day. Now the recipe I have on my website for this steak marinara sauce, it is an Instant Pot recipe, but you could actually throw everything on the skillet and cook it that way. 
And that's it, we've prepped up all of our recipes in one day so that we could have them throughout the rest of the week. And it only takes just a few minutes to make them on the day of. Now the great thing about these recipes is that they do make up a lot. So you'll have leftovers to either supplement for those other two days of the week, or you could take them to lunch for you if you want. Make sure you guys subscribe to my channel and remember to hit the notification bell so you get notified every time I post a new recipe.